Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. Today, I want to kind of share a little thing with you I found out about my truck and evidently is a common problem with F-150s, at least from like 2009 all the way up to, you know, maybe even present day, but the battery terminals on these things have a little issue of corrosion. While there's things and stuff that you can do to help prevent corrosion, in the end game, like if you're like me, I tend to not be under the hood all the time checking on that or cleaning battery posts. I just don't think about it until you have a problem with it. Back a few years ago, my battery went dead I took it in, had the battery replaced on it. About two years after that, the battery was, went completely dead again. And I ended up taking it back and it was replaced under warranty. But when they replaced it, they broke the battery terminal, which I don't blame on them because they simply, you know, it was corroded and it was about corroded in too. So when they messed with the, the nuts and bolts on there, then ended up the terminal just broke. So they ended up having to replace it. But what they replaced it with was just a just a common battery terminal it wasn't an oem ford terminal which means that it didn't have all the correct connections and stuff on it in order to have all the correct wires hooked up to it so they kind of had to make some makeshift things in order to make this thing work well which it did work temporarily but then I had a problem with it again just a couple days ago. I called Ford up and I asked them for this battery terminal for a 2011 F-150. And they told me it was going to be $266 for this thing. And I was like, a battery terminal is $266? And he said, yeah, but it, you know, it has the wires and stuff on it. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't really need the wires. Can't you just buy the terminal by itself? He said, no, Ford doesn't offer just the terminal by itself upon further investigation i found out that you can actually buy a terminal for a different vehicle like a lincoln mark IV or like a ford escape i'm not sure 100 percent which one it goes to but i will put a reference number in there for this replacement but you can buy that terminal separate you just can't buy it ford f-150 specific when you do a search on it it'll come up as it's for these other vehicles, but it also fits an F-150. If you buy the one that's a replacement for the F-150, it is a crimp-on style uh, battery terminal. Well, while there's ways around crimping that battery terminal on there and, you know, using vice grips and all that kind of stuff, I found another one that actually is made specifically for this. And it also has bolts where you can just bolt it on and it has its own crimping system on it. So that's what we got to replace it with, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, this I actually uh, picked up. You can get it off Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can pick that up in case you have this same problem, because this thing is under thirty bucks. And when you're talking two hundred and sixty from the dealer versus thirty bucks and taking a few minutes to change it out yourself, huge difference. So we're going to jump in here, change this thing out. We'll see how easy it is or how hard it is and see if it was worth saving $230 to do it yourself. So this is what we're having to replace. The factory wiring, there are one, four points of connection for the factory wires, and the aftermarket, or the battery company, stuck this aftermarket clamp on here, and it didn't have a place for all these other fittings on it. And while it did temporarily get the job done, it's really kind of a mess, and now that this terminal is actually broke, and I've lost connection again on the truck. And I actually just come out here one morning and the truck wouldn't start at all. Wouldn't even do anything at all. So what we've got to replace it with is this setup, which is the factory style setup. And it actually has all the connections and stuff that you need in order to connect all the wires. Plus, instead of having a crimp on style where you have to buy a special set of crimpers, it's actually got this section here with two bolts in it that you just stick your battery wire into and then you'll tighten it down and it clamps onto it. Plus you so I cleaned up my battery post. I actually had cleaned it up the other day and took a wire brush to it and all that kind of stuff whenever this first messed up. So I just took some uh, battery acid reducer and put on there to make sure that anything that was left is now gone. So what I'm going to do now is take our new connector and pull 
the lead off for the main wire. That way it's just a little easier to handle. I'm actually gonna take this negative battery terminal loose because that way if this positive connects to something, then this thing's not grounded and it won't spark. And when they put this aftermarket replacement on there originally, they just, they cut that connector off instead of taking it out of the crimp. So it actually made this wire a little bit short, but hopefully now with the correct extension and stuff on there, it's not gonna be short anymore. It's gonna be plenty long. So I can actually tuck it back down in there just a little bit. So that actually worked out pretty good. I'm gonna come back and wrap this up with black electrical tape. That way we don't have any chances of that getting onto something kind of insulated a little bit better. So now you just take your other end, we're gonna to connect to the connection. We're gonna put our nut on there. So that looks pretty good. We've got all of our factory wires connected back up to our terminal like it should be instead of having them all cobbled together. Uh, also, I went ahead and put these washers underneath the battery post. I don't know if these things work or not, but they're supposed to help corrosion or keep it from happening. So we're gonna try it. Also, if I start to see some corrosion, I'll go ahead and use my battery cleaner and acid detector, clean the battery post off again. And then I actually have a spray that's a uh, battery corrosive or battery corrosion preventer so I'll try that too but I want to try the washers out the washers don't say uh, to soak them in anything whereas I did see an option though where you can buy washers that have oil soaked on them or you can buy just standard washers I don't know if you're supposed to soak them in oil or whatever but the directions just say to put them on it don't say to do anything else to them so that's the way we're doing it but anyways guys that checks out really good. The connections are nice and solid. Like I say, this connector was under 30 bucks. I will put a link in the description below where you can find this. This is a Dorman 926-882. And like I say, that's the fit for the F-150. So that worked like a charm. You know, like I say, we've got back to our factory connection. It looks factory. Uh, everything connected back the way that it should. If I wouldn't video in this, it would have taken me probably 10 minutes or less to be able to change this out. So I would definitely say that's worth saving $230 on. Something that's so simple as a battery terminal, uh, let a car manufacturer make it something annoying and tough. Ford says, for the F-150 that you can only buy the entire wiring harness that goes to the positive battery terminal. So unless you can cross-reference it or something like that, then when you call your dealership, that's what they're gonna tell you is that you have to spend $260. Not to mention, if you don't feel confident in installing this yourself, a bunch of the things that I've read online, the reviews or, the, uh, or on forums and stuff, is that Ford also charges about 280 to 300 dollars to install that cable so you're looking over 500 dollars to fix your positive battery terminal that's just that's just crazy so guys i just wanted to share this with you because man what a lifesaver that you can actually buy that terminal and a lot of times people will just call up the dealership and and they'll give them the price and they'll say well i mean i gotta do it i gotta get my vehicle fixed but you can get it fixed and do it yourself. Like I say, under 10 minutes, you change those wires out, you're right back to factory. What an awesome setup, and it's less than 30 bucks. 
So guys, if you like videos like this, you find this helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.